Hello guys, welcome to the lecture on for loop in C-sharp. We'll begin by exploring the concept of loops and their variable role in programming. Following that, we'll focus on the for loop statement. Okay, as we mentioned, in general, the statements of a program are executed sequentially. For example, here, the first statement is executed first, followed by the second. However, there are situations, like here, where we need to execute a statement or a group of statements multiple times. This is where loop control or iteration statements come into play. In programming, looping is a way to repeat a set of instructions as long as a certain condition is true. Once the condition becomes false, the loop execution stops. They change the default sequence of execution and enable us to repeat a block of code multiple times. Okay, let's illustrate the advantages of loops with a real-world example. In basketball, shooting practice often requires repeating a set of actions multiple times to improve accuracy. These actions include positioning the body, aiming, and releasing the ball. Every time a basketball player takes a shot, they perform these actions. So, if they want to take three shots, they have to repeat this set of actions three times. Positioning the body, aiming, releasing the ball. Again, positioning the body, aiming, releasing the ball. And for the last time, again. Positioning the body, aiming, releasing the ball. In programming, when we come across a series of repetitive statements, instead of manually repeating them, like this example, we can use loop statements like the for loop to execute them based on our needs. In C sharp, there are four loops or iteration statements. For for each, while, and do while. In this lecture, we'll focus specifically on the for loop statement. This is the syntax of for loop statement. It consists of three parts, the initialization, the condition, and the iteration statement. Let's explain it with a practical example and calculate the sum of numbers from 1 to 10 using two different approaches, one using a for loop and the other without. In this approach, each number from 1 to 10 is added to the sum variable individually, and the code is repeated for each number. As you can see, it requires more lines of code and can become tedious and error-prone if the range of numbers is large. The second approach utilizes a for loop to iterate over the numbers from 1 to 10. This is the initialization part of a for loop. It's executed only once at the beginning of the loop, and it sets the initial value of the loop control variable. In this case, we initialize i variable to 1. This means that the loop will start with i equal to 1 as the first iteration begins. The condition part of a for loop defines the condition that is evaluated before each iteration of the loop. This condition is a Boolean expression that determines whether the loop body should be executed or not. If the condition evaluates to true, the loop body will be executed. If it's false, the loop ends and the program moves on to the next statement. Here, the condition checks if the value of i is less than or equal to 10. As long as this condition evaluates to true, the loop will continue iterating and each value of i is added to the sum variable. Once i becomes greater than 10, the condition becomes false, and the loop will terminate, ending the loop block. Finally, the iteration part is executed after each execution of code inside the loop body. 
It allows us to modify the loop control variable and affect the loop's behavior. In this example, the iteration part increments the value of i by 1 after each iteration. This increment ensures that the variable i eventually becomes greater than 10 and the loop reaches its termination condition. The iteration part can include multiple statements and can involve actions such as incrementing or decrementing and so on. For example here, this code prints the values of the variable i starting from 10 and decreasing by 2 in each iteration until i becomes less than or equal to 0. Now, let's briefly explain the full loop steps. First, the initialization part is executed at the beginning and only one time. Next, the condition is checked. If it's true, the code inside the loop block is executed, followed by the iteration part. Afterward, the condition is checked again. If it remains true, the code inside the block is executed, and the iteration part is repeated. This process of condition checking, code block execution, and iteration continues until the condition becomes false. Alright, let's dive into VS Code and see the for loop statement in action. Okay, let's print the even numbers from 100 to 1. To achieve this, we can use a for loop that iterates from 100 to 1. Inside the loop, we initialize the loop control variable i to 100 and specify the condition for the loop to continue while i is greater than or equal to 1. With each iteration of the loop, the i variable will decrease by 1, covering the numbers from 100 to 1. Now, let's check if the current value of i is an even number. Can you guess how we can determine if i is even? Okay. To check if i is even, we can use an if statement with a modulus operator. If i is even, let's print its current value in the terminal. Ok, as you can see, during each loop iteration, the if statement will be executed. Alright, let's run the application to see the result. Ok, we get the expected result. Now, can you think of a solution that utilizes only a for loop to achieve the same result? Ok, to achieve this, we can modify the iteration part. First, let's decrease the i variable by 2 after each iteration. Next, we can remove the if statement. Now, let's test it out again. As you can see, we obtain the same result. In this example, after each iteration, the loop decrements i by 2, ensuring that only even numbers are printed. Okay, done. See you in the next lecture.